Now let's move on to the for loop. Remember, this is the loop you use when you want to loop a specific number of times. You'll be using this type of loop often in test classes. Basically, in a for loop, you tell it to run a certain number of times by setting a starting number, a run condition, and an increment amount. Here's how that works. Of course, you start with the for and open and close parentheses. Inside the parentheses, there are three sections separated by semicolons. In the first section, you're actually creating a variable. This variable is always an integer and it's almost always called the letter I, which I consider short for iteration number. By the way, ignore the variable naming rules just this one time. You'll often set I to one. This first section is your loop's starting count. In the first iteration of your loop, you'll have access to the I variable and it will equal to one. Next, we set the run condition. As long as this condition evaluates to true, your loop will run its next iteration. You set this condition less than or equal to the number of times you want your loop to run. So in this case, we want our loop to run exactly 200 times. So we say, keep running this loop as long as I, the iteration variable, is less than or equal to 200. Note, we use less than or equal to 200. If we just use less than, our loop would only run 199 times. Finally, we set the increment. This tells our loop to increment our iteration variable by this amount after each iteration. We type I++ because that's another way of saying add one to this value. We could have also typed I equals I plus one, but you'll normally see it written as I plus plus. It's possible to increment I by more than one each iteration, but you rarely see this happen. So to summarize this entire for loop in one sentence, it basically says, start our loop by setting I equals to one, add one to I after each iteration, and keep looping as long as I is less than or equal to 200. Thus, our loop will run exactly 200 times. Here's an example of a for loop in practice. It's not uncommon to see code very similar to this in a test class because you often need to create many records. We'll cover the reasoning behind this in a future course. Back to the loop. Here we're making a for loop that'll run exactly 10 times. I know this because I starts at one, it increments by one each loop iteration, and it'll stop looping after I equals 10. Specifically, this code's purpose is to create exactly 10 accounts. Notice inside the loop that the code actually uses I as a variable. We're including I in both the name of the account and in its website. This is helpful because it lets you differentiate the records you're creating, and it could help you bypass any deduplication rules you may have in your org. For example, if your org has a rule that doesn't let two accounts have the exact same name, using I in your loop makes sure every account will have a different name. As we run through this loop, here's what the output will be. The first time the loop iterates, it'll create a new account with name sfdc1 and website sfdc1.com. The one comes from the variable i. The second time it loops, it'll create another account with sfdc2 as the name and sfdc2.com as the website. Again, the number two comes from the variable i. This pattern continues until the loop creates its final account when i equals 10.